Hey friends, so recently I went to France, as they say, and uh, France, if you're from America, and on my trip to France, I stopped off in Paris and I went to one of my favorite art supply stores. It's across the Seine River from the Louvre called Sennelier. I did the for my R like the French do. Anyways, um, they I went upstairs and I unexpectedly stumbled upon these beautiful jars of watercolor ink. And you guys know I've been on a watercolor ink kick lately. And so I had to buy them because they were covered, the little caps were covered in a wax seal. And the label just looked like my grandma printed it off her label maker and slapped it on a jar that she found. And so I needed to have it because it looked like a small, you know, a, like a small brand needed to support. And then the woman that was working at the store told me that it was made in the same exact style that watercolor paint was made in the 1500s with egg, water, and pigment. And I was like, yep, sold, have to try this. This is awesome. So just to clarify, this paint isn't actually from the 1500s. They didn't have label makers in the 1500s, I believe. Um, and then, but it was made in the same style. So the binding agent is egg, and then it's the ground up pigment and water and that's it. It's super creamy and delicious and very vibrant and explosive. Like when you do wet and wet technique stuff. So it's so much fun to use. I'm so glad I bought some, but I wish I would have bought all of the colors, but I didn't have room in my suitcase. So if you're curious and you wanna see how these watercolor inks work and look, then let's dive in. This watercolor ink is so much fun. It explodes and is super vibrant and uh, pushy when you bloom two colors together. So I really wish I would have bought more colors, but I got this bright orange, this bright blue, this blue Alexandri and Minium. <laughs> and then I also got white. And so I'm just gonna show you what, this, what these colors look like. Okay, so I put the pigment the watercolor ink inside of these plastic jars because, and I actually get this question a lot, why do you put it in the plastic jars? The mouth of bottles is too small. So like if I want to paint with my Mottler brush, I cannot. Um, and also it's just because of, even with a round brush, like a size 16 round brush or size six, it's still too small to, it's very easy to tip over. So I have more room and more space to kind of swirl around in there as opposed to the jars or the bottles. So I do these plastic jars. If you want some plastic jars like this, I will link to them in this video. Make sure you check it out or you can just go to my Amazon shop, jennarainey.com forward slash Amazon. And I have all the supplies that I always use in that shop. So in this jar, I have the orange color that I got mixed with the white color that I got, just so you know. So you can add certain ratios of each pigment and mix them up in these plastic jars too. So that's why I like to use them as well. So while I was also in France, I um, saw a lot of irises and painted a lot of irises at my workshops, at my retreats. And so I'm gonna use, I'm gonna take myself back to France a little bit and paint a really big blooming iris. I stayed a, at a hotel that was by Jardin Tuileries. <laughs> Definitely not pronouncing that right. Tuileries, Tuileries. Uh, and there's, in that garden, there's a lot of irises in a lot of different varieties of colors and it was just gorgeous. The iris that I'm gonna paint today is obviously gonna be in some funky wild colors because I have blue and orange. So we're gonna, get a little funky, but I'm just laying down water first and then I'm gonna pop in some color. So it's obviously super fun and therapeutic to just watch the color explode and bleed on these petals. Um, they're very creamy, like I was saying, very creamy and fun, just kind of like a velvety 
feeling on your brush and on the paper. And so highly, if you're ever in Paris, highly recommend checking out that store and seeing if you can find these, but also you might be able to find a similar brand that makes it in a similar fashion with the egg, just squeezing in some of this blue in between the orange. Would also be fun, really fun to paint like koi fish or something with these. And then I'm gonna do some of this, this kind of white, the white from this brand is like really powerful because it'll sit on top of these colors. So if I'm not liking how something's moving, I can just go over it with this whitish pink that I mixed up. And that's fun. Get a little more explosive with the orange. gonna paint some leaves with water and let the watercolor just kind of bleed into it from the flower. So obviously I could get a little bit more realistic with the colors and paint something that looks like an iris flower if I had more than just these two colors. Blue and orange are also contrasting colors, so I don't want to get too crazy with placing orange next to blue too much because they will make brown. Like you can see them overlapping in some of these areas, so we've got this like blue-gray, which I don't mind, but doing it too much will create too much of that muddy color. But overall, obviously the fun aspect of these watercolor inks is their creamy texture and the crazy blooming that you get with the orange and uh, blue or some with the water, if you mix white with the orange or the blue. So there you go, beautiful, fun, vibrant, creamy, eggy pigments, watercolor ink. If you're ever in Paris and you have the chance to stop by Magasin Sennelier. I'm not sure how to actually say it, so don't make fun of me. We'll link to the exact one because there's like three different Sennelier stores in the city. You want to make sure to go to this one specifically. I don't know if the other ones have this brand. So, and this one is just like the one. So go to it, check it out. This brand rocks or this uh, style of pigment rocks. I obviously love my My Mary paints and my regular watercolor paints, but I've been digging digging watercolor inks lately. You'll notice that I've been using Daler Rowney watercolor inks on here and in my art community and my Patreon for my art tutorials. Um, but this was just a really cool, seemed like a really small brand. I don't really know the story though, or what the brand actually is. But anyways, check it out. I hope that was informative and helpful and insightful and fun to watch. Um, if you want more in-depth watercolor tutorials and kind of like a watercolor school, join my Patreon, check it out. We have a few different monthly tier options for subscribers. Um, I'm also in there doing a monthly live Q&A and a monthly art class. And also it comes with an art community where you can share your own artwork, get feedback from other people in the community along with myself and make new friends, find out new things about art things and more. So if you're curious and you want to dive deeper into watercolor and all things art, make sure to check out my Patreon, AKA Generani Art School. But as always, thank you so much for watching these videos, for liking, for commenting, and for subscribing to our channel. It means the world to us and it helps us spread the good news about watercolor and creativity and beyond. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.